In 1969, more than 9,000 Americans were killed in Vietnam. Nixon aimed to reduce American casualties by Vietnamizing the war, letting the South Vietnamese do the fighting. In 1970, as U.S. troop withdrawals increased, American deaths dropped by more than one half. All of the U.S. troops cannot be withdrawn in 1970. It will take many years. Ambassador Bunker, General Abrams, Everyone have assured me that the U.S. people and U.S. government will continue to stay determined to help the Vietnamese people in army to defend the freedom in Vietnam. Good morning, Vietnam. Welcome to the Don Buster. Today is the day. The total number of Americans in Vietnam continued to drop. But among new arrivals, anti-war sentiments were spreading. Morale was in decline. Vietnam gave the language a new term, fragging. In more than 200 incidents during 1970, American troops tried to kill or wound their superiors using fragmentation grenades. After five years in Vietnam, America's armed forces had changed. I had an experience, and I'll, I'll never forget it. I went in uh, on payday, the, the, the uh, commissaries and the PX, well, really, the PXs over there are just mobbed. Everybody has their money for the month. And the lines are really long, and, it, and really, rank has no privilege. Everybody stands on line. Um, I came in one time, and there was a long line, and we were all standing there, and uh, uh, a couple of black guys came in, and they walked in front of the line. So I said uh, to the one fellow, I said, hey, boy, you'll have to get back on the line. And I didn't mean it in a derogatory sense. Well, the guy went crazy. I mean, he, he, he started to yell at me, who are you calling boy? I'm, you know, I'm no boy. I'm, and I don't remember exactly all the things he said to me, but... I said to him, I said, look, I apologize. Now, I was a captain, and he was a PFC. Um, I decided it was time to leave. And he was really causing a scene. So I, I walked out the back door, and the guy followed me. And I turned around to say, hey, look, I'm sorry. And the guy hit me. I mean, he, he, he punched me. And, I, and he was, I don't know, he was about 5'8", five 5'9", foot five foot 120 pounds. He couldn't have hurt me. But, the, but in my mind, I said, this, this guy's a PFC. He just hit a captain. I mean, it wasn't him hitting me. It was the whole relationship that, that I'd grown up with, you know, enlisted men don't hit officers. I mean, you go to jail for that. The racial polarization was uh, deeper there than I, I've ever seen. They had black sides of town, white sides of town. And even the Vietnamese uh, accepted it. And uh, woe to the uh, white who, who walked in a black area unaccompanied and vice versa, woe to the black who walked into a white area of town uh, unaccompanied. I just found myself isolating myself from uh, the uh, white, you know, soldiers and things that blacks, we began to associate among ourselves more so. We began to have political education classes. We began to come together to sit down to talk about, you know, some of the problems that we was confronted with, um, our, our commitment. For blacks, uh, such as myself, it was reading, uh, after reading uh, Malcolm X and Black History, uh, uh, Martin Luther King and, and other black, more black militant, Elrich Cleaver, et cetera, it, it naturally led in, into uh, political reading. And uh, I read uh, Dr. Spock on Vietnam. There was, all, there was anti-war literature in Vietnam readily available. A lot of the guys felt that we shouldn't, you know, like risk our life or put our life on the line when it was a war back in America when we wasn't free. You know, like when our dogs were being turned onto our people, the young children were being bonded in churches, and uh, it was very confusing. Most blacks still was, you know, very supportive. 
You know, most blacks were very supportive of the, uh, of the system, what they had to do. The closer they got to combat, the more blacks and whites needed each other, the better they got along. Bob Hope's 1970 Christmas show played to shrinking audiences. Wow. In two years, the U.S. force in Vietnam had been reduced by more than 300,000. I'm surprised to see you. Where were you fellas hiding when the withdrawal took place? In Saigon, demonstrators protested against the Thieu government. Many favored an immediate peace. Others denounced corruption or sought to discredit the 1971 presidential election. Anxious to give South Vietnam a democratic image, American officials searched for an anti-communist contender to run against Thieu. But Thieu stifled domestic opposition. To Thieu, like his predecessors, the election was a means to control the population and placate the Americans. <laughs> President Thieu declared that the election and his victory were an expression of civil rights in a free and democratic society. The only effective opposition to Thieu was the Viet Cong, which now labeled itself the Provisional Revolutionary Government. It was active in much of the countryside. It's going to get to be about 3.30, 4 o'clock, and people say, you know, it's getting late in the afternoon, you better go home because the government's going to change. And literally, the uh, Saigon government sort of closed up and went home, and uh, the PRG people would come in, help the people, uh, maybe even work at night you know, helping to uh, sift the rice or put it in, in bags, talk to the people, bring them movies, um, or just visit. They could, because, of course, the PRG in the area were not, as people thought, North Vietnamese that had come south, but were really the, uh, the people themselves. One of the things that was a problem for a foreign government coming in and trying to control an area where it was not popular was figuring out who, who was against the government. Their way of solving it seemed to be to round up groups of people and interrogate them. Identifying subversives was part of a broader effort called pacification, always a key American strategy in Vietnam. In 1968, America's Central Intelligence Agency